the presentation was phenomenal. Great keynote speech, even though we weren't able to be together in person. Bradley still brought it strong with the information. And uh, yeah, thanks again. So we had some great um, questions come in. So I want to fire a few of them your way and then give give Q an opportunity to talk to you as well. One question from Nancy Van Rees, she was asking in regards to a website called batchusa.com. And she's, she's really wanting to know, I think about um, how to get blog posts out on Alexa or content from blog posts out on Alexa. And um, I know there's many, many options for this, but Bradley, what do you, uh, what do you think about the answer to that question? Yeah, I mean, I think that for most folks on on this, you know, attending this conference, the answer is going to be the flash briefing format to start with. Um, you know, that's so flash briefing format. Uh, that is something that uh, that's a term um, that doesn't have to be uh, associated exclusively with Alexa, but it generally is three, five, seven minute short form content where uh, usually on a daily basis or every other day or something like that, it flows into uh, Alexa devices and smart speakers and is just meant to be a quick hitting piece of content uh, that, that's more regularly consumed than perhaps what a normal Alexa skill is. And um, that's where I would start. You know, the, the overarching theme of Alexa and Google Assistant is do not spend money until you experiment with it and uh, start to get your feet wet. Now you can work with a partner, um, but don't dive in. It's not like, you know, a website, you know, you're going to need a website and you know, you know, uh, there, there's less risk to that. But with Alexa and Google Assistant, even with Bixby and some of these other ones, take advantage of some of the tools that, that these major companies present to get your feet wet and experiment a little bit before you then dive in whole hog. And for the question about uh, the blog posts, flash briefings would be the way to do that. Yeah, and Nancy, I can definitely give you some resources on how to do the flash briefing. So just for the sake of time, we had another great question from Matt Carmen in Brooklyn. He runs an agency called Fermented Pixels. And Matt was asking about... Um, a client that is interested in improving their online learning, online tutoring abilities. And so I get really excited about these kinds of questions. And in this answer, Bradley, can you, some of the stuff you talked about in your keynote were maybe more first party capabilities on top of the voice devices. Can you talk about how skills and third party capabilities are somewhat needed for, for something like what Matt's asking about? Yeah, and I can give you a great example right off the bat, and it's one that I normally refer to in a, in, in presentations I give, uh, and, and I, I I refer to it in this one as well. You got to check out Novel Effect. So um, if you're asking about education, you know the the nexus of education and voice, uh, all roads for you start with Novel Effect. So um, you want to Google that, you want to try out their technology and see what that's about, because that'll paint you a picture that will help you answer the question of how to bring more online learning, you know, how to fuse your online learning initiatives with voice. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there's other, other paths you can go after that, but I would suggest starting there. Cool. And I've got one more. So Patrick Sweetman, who's joining us as part of our roundtable discussion, um, somewhere around 11.15, 11.30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we all know each other from Project Voice as well. Pat asks, uh, is Bixby still viable with Adam Shire leaving Samsung and Samsung's talks with Google Assistant integration? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't we all like to know the answer to that? Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I see the rumor was that, um, Google was putting pressure on Samsung to, um, you know, abandon Bixby and integrate Google assistant everywhere, but, but to do so, I think it, it was either this past Friday or the Friday before that. And I don't, there's no indication whether that's happened or not. 
Um, but certainly Samsung has had some key defections and, you know, the, there's a, there's a reason for optimism and a reason for pessimism. You can choose whichever you want. The reason for pessimism is you, you can't replace Adam Chire, um, and him, him leaving, um, means something has gone wrong. Um, you know, there's just no way around that. But the, uh, the, the upside is that Samsung has been planning for some time to roll out uh, specific Bixby integration around smart TVs. And that's been the sort of great white hope for, uh, for Samsung is that, you know, yes, Bixby uh, has been slandered and maligned <laughs> and everybody wants to delete it off their phone. And that's been a lot of the media stuff. And there's a lot of great features of it. And unfortunately, it doesn't get as much attention as it should. But Samsung has been planning this whole time to come out with uh, much tighter Bixby integration around smart TVs, because obviously that smart TVs is an area where Samsung dominates. And the idea of combining specific voice assistant functionality with a very specific piece of hardware, you know, a mobile device does anything very uh, generalist sort of device. Uh, there's, if you know that you're on a smart TV, you can plan for, for being on a smart TV and you can do very specific things. And that's exactly what Bixby was going to do. So I'm, I'm interested to see if they're going to roll that out still um, or if they scrap it all together or what they're going to do right now. Uh, hey, you and I both <laughs> don't have any information on that. Good answer, though. I mean, I think you did a great job in your keynote talking about everyone winning with Alexa and Google Assistant. And it's a great question from Pat, but uh, I think focusing on Alexa and Google Assistant at the moment uh, for the foreseeable future is the way to go. So one last thing here, and I'll, I'll, I'll give Q Harrison an opportunity to unmute and turn his camera on if he's, if he's available to ask you any questions. But I'll just say that you uh, got a lot of love uh, with the senior citizens. Um, portion of your presentation there. And uh, a couple of my favorite people out of Nashville, Galen Wilson and Jamie Dunham, both, uh, both came in and, and were really interested in that. So, so nice job there. And, um, and uh, Q Harrison, do you have any, any, anything you want to ask Bradley before we move into our next, uh, next session? Well, one, Bradley, it's always good to chat with you. Good uh, to see you, Q. Second, your newsletter has been spectacular. I think you you might have been getting my emails every now and then. I'll ping you and be like, "Good, good update, good update." I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, for someone that wants to learn more about voice and doesn't want to necessarily do a deep dive every you know two months or so, it's a quick like five minute briefing, and like you read it, you'll learn something. If it's boring that day the chances are Bradley's going to talk about something entirely different the next day. So you'll, you can get fascinated and up to speed. You, I got to say, I, I appreciate the shout out for the newsletter and, and you sort of, you, I think you can appreciate this. I think you do appreciate this. It's like voices at the standpoint voice right now. We're, we're a couple of years in you know, Alexa came in and really, um, was a major point of inflection for everything, just a flashpoint uh, for everything taken off. And now we are in storytelling mode for voice. We're at, we're at that time where the stories are out there waiting to be told. The senior citizens one is a perfect example. Um, what Front Porch has done, uh, what several other uh, healthcare providers have done um, what, uh, what Google and Amazon themselves have done. Um, this, you know, and that's just one area. The stories are out there within voice and conversational AI waiting to be told. And the more they are told, the more other people will jump on board. And the more other people are able to use those stories and then catalyze the, the uh, investment and the resources and the, the, the effort that they need to. And that's what This Week in Voice VIP is about. I appreciate the comments on that. Trust me, we're just getting started. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for it.